Welcome, my name is Lydia, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for Salem Community Church's online campus. We picked a great day to be here, and we have an amazing message just for you, so let's jump right in. We understand that in the book of Genesis, we use it for wedding services, and we use it for services, but God looked and said, it's not good for man to be alone, so I will make him a helper. I will make him a helpmeet, and yes, that is applicable to, uh, to weddings, but it's also applicable in an overarching manner to you and I because it just comes down to it. We make our worst decisions when we're isolated, right? We make, the, we make the worst decisions when we are insulated from other people. Our minds run just buck wild with nonsense all the time when we don't have those around us that God has assigned to us to help us navigate difficult situations. We are just better together. We're built for community we're built to be connected. This is why the, uh, the, the church at large is correlated to being the body of Christ. Because how, how asinine would it be for the foot to say to the knee, hey, I really don't need you. An elbow to look at a shoulder and be like, you know what, I'm better than you because I do thus and so. When in reality, we might function differently, but we're still connected with the same mindset and purpose in unity. Does that make sense? And so that's what I, that's what I hope to land today. I've got, some, I've got some of our Salem youth that are going to kind of help me with a little bit of a demonstration. So this is that moment where I'm calling them up and they're coming to the stage no awkward moments as the entire room looks at you and we're all waiting. Okay, there we go. They're going to come up and they're going to help me. Uh, uh, how many people like puzzles? Any puzzle puzzle people in the room? Puzzles? I got one puzzler. Two, three. That's like, a, eh, I kind of like puzzles. Four. Okay, puzzles. So we're, we're going to uh, go ahead and push the carts out. Man, what is this, amateur hour? Come on, guys. We got, I got like a time clock. We got to get to the catfish house over here. Okay. So we're, these are the exact same puzzle. I think we actually have a picture of what the puzzle looks like uh, on the screen. So Josh, you're going to be, this is your puzzle over here, right? There we go. Yeah, 20-piece puzzle of dinosaur friends. Dinosaur friends. Who doesn't want dinosaur friends? We've got five others that are, you're working on this puzzle all together. So everyone over here, let's get one person here, two, three, four, Wesley, you fit in right here. All right, here is your puzzle. No, don't start now. Why are you trying to cheat? Oh, my God. Okay, Josh, you're, you're all by your lonesome, dude. You're, and, and that's okay, but you know, you're here. I'm glad you're here. So we're, I'm at least going to help you. We're going to flip them over, okay? It's going to be a race. It's a race. You ever seen that movie, Rat Race? Okay, don't worry about it. Um, don't worry about it. I, I don't remember if there's unwholesome parts in there so if there are just scratch everything I said about that um, I don't remember I just remember yes here we are and now it's awkward okay so Josh you have the same exact puzzle 20 pieces okay as the folks over here okay now they're your friends comrades compatriots whatever right same puzzle you get it right you understand that you're racing them okay you understand that's what the puzzle looks like okay Everyone over here, you're racing Josh. You understand that's what the puzzle looks like, right? I want to see who can put the puzzle together the fastest. Does that make sense? Just pretend it's just us right here. There's no one else in the room. No one is watching online right now. You don't have to worry about that audience. That The entire <laughs> world is literally watching you. I have friends overseas that watch our services. Okay, so ready? All right, on your mark, get set, go, all right? Yeah, that one goes there. I know none of you can see what's going on. There's a puzzle just on the, I, some are like, I can't see the puzzle. It looks like that. Just, you're going to have to believe me in this moment. Um, okay, yep. I don't think it goes. Oh, okay. Yeah, work together. Oh, okay, wow. Have you, do you have any pieces put together yet? You have three. Okay, three is good. Three is great. That, I think, no. Try the edges first. Yeah, if you do the edges, that's usually, I'm not a professional puzzler, but that's just, I, I hear, I've Googled how to puzzle, um, and they say, they say, wow, holy smokes, you guys are, okay, 
All right, you guys are actually done. You're done. Okay, finish. Josh, you still have three pieces. Okay. And I just want, I just want everyone just, just kind of freeze in motion. Everyone just pretend to go back to like your work. Pretend you're working on the puzzle, but just be frozen. Just stay here, okay? The interesting thing between this, and I know you can't see the puzzle, okay, but they can. They're looking at the same situation, but Josh has one vantage point of his puzzle. Now, so does Lila, but Lila is looking at the same situation, but from a different angle than Wesley is. Wesley's looking at the same situation, but at a different angle than from Jackson. Jackson is looking at the same situation from his vantage point, but it's, and Xavier's looking at the same situation, and he's looking at it from his perspective. Do we understand? We, get, we understand how we're better together. That we're looking at the same problem, but because I see things from a different perspective, I can help you if you're caught in the moment of how I can, hey, I know you're trying to make that fit, but it actually doesn't. I'm seeing it from a different vantage point where Josh is isolated by himself, even though I'm here with you, God's with you. But he's having to put the puzzle together all by his lonesome. Does that make sense? Is, is that make, and it, I get it's a 20 piece puzzle. But what happens when life is more complicated than just a 20 piece puzzle? What happens when I, watch, when I'm trying to fit my life together and I'm only seeing it for, you can continue, yeah, you can keep putting it together. Yeah. I'm trying to fit my life together, but I'm only seeing it from one angle. This is why I need friends around me. This is why we're built to be in community around us so that they can help us navigate the situation that we're in because we are better. Yes. All right, can we give it up for our Salem Youth Helpers? I... I appreciate you. Oh, you can like roll the carts to the back. Thank you, Josh. I'll make sure you get a reward for helping and doing all this. Josh, I, I gave Josh a heads up. Like, hey, Josh, by the way, you're going to lose. He's like, no, I'm not. I said, I've rigged it. You're going to lose. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to lose. Right? Help me prove my point, okay? I think this is, I think this is really I know this is, it's a base, it's a 20 piece puzzle, but wow, what a simple representation of our life. That I get, I, I'm trying to figure out how everything fits. And if I'm doing it by myself, I still may get some pieces to fit together. But I've got friends that can surround me to, hey, Nathan, I know you're not seeing this. Maybe, maybe this piece fits this way. Does that make sense? Here, here's, what, here's what we look at. It just, uh, we understand that um, uh, we're, we're, we benefit one another. We saw that. That we're built to be connected to one another. That we can actually accomplish more when we work together. We're of the same mindset. We are in unity together. And it's just, uh, here's the interesting thing is that we're better together because we're connected to each other, which makes us connected to him. That's, that's where it really comes down to brass tacks. That's where it really happens. Is Yes, we're connected together, but it causes us to be a part of the body, which Christ is the head of that body. And when he gets involved in the situation, here's what he does. Connected to him gives me the opportunity to be connected to abundance. Abundance in every area and aspect of my life. Here's what he said. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus says, I have come to give you life and that life abundantly. Now, having life abundantly does not mean life is easy. There's still a puzzle that has to be put together. There's still questions. How does this fit? 
but we have access to abundance in him, abundance of peace, abundance of hope, abundance of joy, abundance of provision, abundance of of whatever he has, I have access to it, and I have access to it abundantly. Whatever it is that you need, he's got it. And whatever he's got, he wants to give it to you. That is what he does. So here, here's, here's what he says. Let, let me show it to you in action. Let me, let me show you characteristics that when they're linked together, offer access to abundance, okay? I want to pull it out of the angle of what we see with the, early, the first church, the early church in the book of Acts. I want to go to Acts Chapter 1, write it on your neighbor's arm. If you brought your Bible, turn to Acts 1. I'm going to tell you to highlight some things. You're allowed to highlight and write things in your Bible. If your Bible is too holy to write in, get another Bible, right? It should look like gangbangers tagged it. That's what your Bible, a good broken Bible it means that your life is probably not broken, um, right? If you have it on your phone, hey, shout out, we're getting Wi-Fi. I think it's actually getting finished this coming week because they dropped in the line. So all of your electronic Bibles will now be able to work here uh, throughout the entire building, uh, not just in like specific corners where if you hold your phone at the right angle and try to get it, like, yeah, okay? Uh, Acts 1, and I think we have Bibles in the sky, verse 1 through 4. Uh, This is on one occasion, while he, Jesus, was eating with them, He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If you're a King James fan, it says, and the Holy Ghost, okay? Wait, okay? Wait in Jerusalem for what I promised you. What did he tell them to do? He told them to, one word, to wait, wait, okay? Now let's go to chapter two, right? This is the one that we quote the most, Uh, chapter two. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house they were sitting, in which they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. I think it's interesting. If you pull this, these scriptures apart, there's cause and effect. There's cause and effect that gives them the opportunity. We call it in this verse, suddenly. But I think you can input in this moment that it is his life abundantly. I'm not changing the scripture. I'm just giving an understanding of this is a moment where God pours himself out in abundance. But it took things happening on their end to get to that moment. The first thing that happens, three things that make the difference. The first thing is obedience. They were obedient. What he said, they were obedient to the instructions that Jesus gave. What did he say? He said, "Go wait in Jerusalem." In 1 Corinthians 15, we understand that this was a a, a phrase at the end of his ministry that he would have given to those that would have heard him, which would have been 500 some people. 500 people heard his last commands. We see this in 1 Corinthians 15. But there's only 120 that show up in the upper room. Now, I'm not good at math, okay? Okay? We all know this, but basic math would say 380 missed out on what he wanted to do in their lives because they found something better to do. 120 were obedient. Now, here's the thing. We think that with God, there's these monumental moments where it's like, okay, I gotta go climb Everest. I have to like jump and, 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 and make the span from one side of the Grand Canyon to the other. Can I let you know where I fall down the most? It's not the big, grandiose, monumental tasks that he puts in front of me. It's the everyday self-discipline. It's the everyday self-control to be obedient to the small things. Did Jesus give them a monumental task? 
No. Go wait in Jerusalem for the appointed time. Go wait till it shows up. All, all they had to do was wait. And the 120 that were obedient, their lives were radically changed. They, their lives just mind blown because they were obedient they had opportunity to step into the abundance that he wanted to get to them the whole time he talked about it when he when he would when he would teach them and when he would navigate a, a, a life with them he's like hey my father wants to do something bigger than this moment that you're experiencing right now but you have to wait that's where i get thrown off in life because I'm trying to get it on my time. I'm trying to get it on uh, uh, in, in my way and in how I want things to happen. And that's how I just, yeah, God, man, have me go climb a mountain. I can do it. And I will take Instagram selfies and I'll do the duck lips and everything and make sure that the lighting is good and it gets my good side. And I'll like, you know, tell everybody about it. And I've got a great story. That's not what God does. He's looking for the obedience in the everyday little items that just take self-control. Here's a question for you. What are the simple instructions that he's given you that you're neglecting to follow through on? Man, what if it's just missing those that's causing us to miss the mark. Pause for emphasis. What if it's, let me, let me tell you the ones that I bring up that I just find in the Bible. Maybe it's simple instruction, bring all the tithe and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. Right? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Forgive. And it will be forgiven you. Right? May, I, just, I, I just wrote a few down. What if it's, hey, watch this, watch this. Love your enemy. What if the reason, I'm just, I'm just saying what if, could it be the reason we aren't stepping into the abundance that God has for us is because we are neglecting obedience to the simple things. Now I'm like, look, I'm just, I don't know, I don't know what it is for your life. I'm just saying I know that's what it is for my life. Like, I, I don't mean, like this, I know it's when Nathan just like, Nathan, Nathan, crucify your flesh. Right? Be led by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the works of the flesh in your life. Like, it's the simple things. That's what I think. Maybe I'm not the only one that's, I'm missing the abundance in my life. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not the only one in the room. Maybe I'm not the only one that's worshiping in this moment that is just like, yeah, he has given me simple instructions. He told me to get plugged in. He told me to get involved. He told me to stop doing things. Maybe, maybe that's, ooh, that wouldn't feel like it went super deep in that moment in some people's hearts. Maybe it's not the things that he's telling you to do. Maybe it's the things he's telling you to not do. And that's why we're missing out on the abundance that he wants to pour out. Does that make sense, church? Does that make sense? Okay, so here, here, let's look at this. Second thing, second key that made a difference, patience. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, the trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now, if you live anywhere between 2269 Seven Mile Ferry Road and 2275 Seven Mile Ferry Road. That might happen to be the house right next door, right? You would think that somebody who lives over there owns a lot of stock in Amazon. 
because there are packages nonstop coming to whoever it is that lives over there. Who, I don't know who it is. I'm just saying the person that lives right next door, wow. It's like they're on first name basis with the Amazon driver. Okay? It's not the wife. It's the husband. He's got a problem. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Like we're praying for him. Right? <laughs> His wife put him on an allowance. That's a true story. Uh, <laughs> here's what I love. I'm talking about me, people. If you're like, I don't, I don't, what is he talking about? I'm talking about me. I love Amazon Prime. You know why I love Amazon Prime? It's not just because it's Christmas, like every day, literally every day that boxes show up. It's like, oh my gosh. You ever like order something and you forgot that you ordered it? And then when it shows up, you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. <laughs> right? Certainly I'm not the only one, Okay. It's just, yeah, those are like, oh, I love those moments. I really do. It like, just brings joy to my heart. Here's what I love, though. I love that I can track the package. It is worth, like, I know, I know it's going to show up. I ordered it on Friday. I know it's going to show up on Tuesday, but I am still checking it three times a day on Saturday. Come on, am I the only person? Like, I, like we know, yeah, you, who are the Amazon Prime Package trackers, yes, yes. We are a group solidified together. We, need, we are in community together. I love it. I know it's not coming until Tuesday, but I sure am looking every single day, just getting more and more excited, like, what if the Amazon truck driver loves me and he's going to forego all his other routes to make sure I get Whatever it is that I ordered, that more than likely I'm a conspicuous consumer and I don't need, I get it, but it just looks, I felt better. It was, you know, just, I felt better because I bought a flannel. I, whatever, you know. It's like, but it looks so good on there. How interesting is it that we love the fact that we can track the package? We can see when it's gonna get there. But that's not life. That's so not life. That's, that's so, uh, uh, what happens when there's no tracking number and the frustration that comes into mind of like, when's it gonna get here? We obsess and we obsess. In this moment, Jesus gave, go wait in, in, in Jerusalem until the promise shows up. There's no tracking. Thanks, Jesus. Appreciate it. You're like, tweaking and like triggering my OCD tendencies in this moment. Like, if, how long am I gonna have to wait? <laughs> what time do I need to be there by? Because I've got some things that I could be doing, right? He says, go wait until the appointed time. Go wait. Well, how long is it gonna take? You don't need to worry about that. You know why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by, hey God, I'm gonna pick my foot up. And I don't know where it's gonna land, but I know that you said you would lead me and guide me in all truth. You said that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So I'm gonna pick my foot up and I'm gonna trust that you're going to set it down where you need me. I don't walk by what I can see. I don't navigate my life by what I can hear. I live my life by faith. And it sometimes, can we just be honest, that's scary. It presses in on us because we want to know when the package is gonna get there. We wanna know, God, how are you gonna work this out? How are you gonna do this? When are you gonna do this? It's gonna be in a year? Okay, I can put up with this for a year, right? Let me know the light at the end of the tunnel. Go wait in Jerusalem. How long am I gonna have to put up with anxiety and depression? I'm your healer, just wait. How long will I have to suffer with this? I've got this, just wait. They were obedient to do it, but then in the middle of it, they exhibited patience. They had to. If you contextualize this entire moment, we read the Bible in chapter and verse and, and years go by on pages. 
Abram, I'm gonna make you the father of many nations. Awesome, when? I'm gonna do it. 25 years later. David, I'm gonna anoint you to be king of all Israel. I'm just a shepherd boy, I know. You're gonna be great. Well, when am I gonna do it? In time. Years passed from the moments that, that God gave commands to when fulfillment, watch, watch, when abundance showed up. Does that make sense? If, if, we, don't exert, if we don't exert things like patience, how I respond while waiting often shapes how I grow in the waiting. However, so my attitude, my demeanor, my willingness to believe, God, you said it, so that's what's gonna happen. You, you're, you said you're gonna move, so you're gonna move, and I'm just, how I, res my attitude in responding, they were patient, right? Does that make sense to everyone? You smelling what I'm cooking? Okay, here's the third thing. Uh, 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 um, the, they, were, they were obeyed, they were patient, but guess what? They were in unity together. Now, I want you to think about this. 120 people, okay? 120 people with various and sorted backgrounds, right? If I, look at the followers of Jesus, people that had devils that they were delivered from, women caught in adultery, okay? Uh, people ingrained in other religions, right? Gentiles, Jews, like, I mean, just like every varying background, different ethnicities, different flavors, different styles, boot cut, skinny jeans, right? It's just like, it, just, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm steak and eggs, or I'm like, I'm salmon and asparagus, right? There's just different varying degrees of, of the people that followed Jesus, but they were in unity together. Unity doesn't mean that you all like the same thing. Unity means that I'm putting my preference aside. <clears throat> Unity means that you like blue, I like red, but I'm just excited that we're here together. It doesn't mean that we agree on every single thing. It means that we look and we see the puzzle that needs to be built from our vantage point. So we work on it from our angle and our vantage point for the common cause of the greater good. Because when I said yes to Jesus, I immediately said no to Nathan. When I said yes to Jesus, I understood that it's his will and not mine. When I said yes to Jesus, I immediately acquired a taste for less of me and more of you. It's not about what I want to do. It's not about where I want to go. God, what is it that you have for me in this moment? That's what I want. Who are you connecting me to? Who are you aligning me with and leaning me up against so that we can be light in the darkness of the world around us, so that we can be a city set upon a hill, so that we can impact the 52% on the other side of our stained glass windows to make a difference in their lives because it's not about me. Here's what Jesus said. He said, I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us that the world will believe you sent me. There's just this understanding that we have to be in unity, even if we're in moments of life that we don't like, in moments of life where we just have differences, in moments of life that are confusing, in moments of life that are uncomfortable, that we're in unity together. Again, it's, it's not that we like the same thing, it's that we're focused on the same goal, like a puzzle of dinosaur friends. Does that make sense? Here, here's what, it, uh, these ingredients uh, aren't enough. Just, uh, uh, the, these are, aren't just ingredients and characteristics, they are cause and effect. Watch this, Lydia's gonna come up here and she's gonna make this sound so much more spiritual because she's gonna play the guitar underneath me. 
She's just gonna come up and she's about, like, you gonna play in the key of C? Sure, she's gonna play in the key of C. It's gonna get so much more spiritual as soon as she starts to play. These aren't just random things that we should, they're, they're cause and effect to get to what the Bible said in the book of Acts, and suddenly a sound as of a mighty rushing wind filled the house. It was because of their obedience, because of their patience, because of their unity together that suddenly could show up in their life. Told you. Some of you, I'll take that back, all of you need some suddenly. Suddenly. Some of you have been praying for suddenly. God, with my spouse, I need some suddenly. God, for my kids, I need some suddenly. God, in my job, I need some, I need some suddenly to show up. Suddenly, peace arrives. Suddenly, husband and wife are put back together. Suddenly, kids are hungry for the things of God. Suddenly, addictions are broken. Suddenly, there's a thirsting for the things of God and for righteousness. What's the suddenly in your life that you need? If you could just say, hey, God, if you could show up with this and it happened suddenly, what would be that thing that would make you run around this room? Healing in your body? Suddenly. Finances taken care of? Suddenly. Provision? Suddenly. Restoring your mind? Suddenly. I'm telling you, God wants to do suddenly in your life. I mean that. I mean that, but I think sometimes we are so isolated looking at our problem that we never get the opportunity to even think about Obedience and patience and unity until we're in a moment like this where we have others that we're leaning on, community that we're connected to so that God can suddenly show up. Wow, what an incredible message. I am so glad you joined us. If you would like to worship with your giving, you can do that by texting the amount that you'd like to give to the number 84321, or you can give safely and securely on our website, salemcommunity.church. At Salem Community Church, we are here to create community centered on Christ. We'll see you again next week.